In my book, there are probably half a dozen photos of Russian Orthodox priests uh, blessing nuclear missiles uh, with holy water. Uh, or, or standing there with icons. You know, Putin, even now, uh, he invented, well, not invented, he appointed a, a Russian saint, um, a Seraphim of Sarov, to be the patron saint of Russian nuclear weapons. Uh, and he actually went, I have a photo, he blessed uh, the relics, and there he is with the patriarch at that time, at that time, uh, Alexei, um, uh, praying, and blessing um, uh, the procession in um, in the in the city of Sarov, which is which is Sarov, which is the capital of the Russian uh, nuclear research. How that came about? It's a long story. Uh, the the back of independent church was broken by Ivan the Fourth, known as Ivan the Terrible, in the middle of 16th century when he killed the last independent. Uh, 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 Metropolit of Russia by the name of Philip. Uh, he either strangled him or poisoned him, uh, first exiled him. From that point on, and then add to that Peter the Great, which has essentially made priests uh, the state functionaries. From that point on, he, he, he created the so-called Synod um, and, and paid their salaries. And so the Russian Orthodox Church is a sad story, with some notable exceptions of martyrs. Um, a sad story of yet another state institution in the service of uh, authoritarians. And, but I, to be honest, um, uh, it's hard for me to imagine um, a, a sadder case than now, because, all right, so Stalin, you know, Lenin and Stalin, remember there was a, I mean, 90% of uh, priests, nuns and, and uh, and uh, 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 other uh, servants of, of the church were simply killed or sent in the gulag between 1917 and 1930-35 uh, and continued to be. Um, and of course, Stalin added to it. Stalin revived the church um, during World War II um, for obvious reasons. He wanted to motivate uh, the believers who, of course, if they did pray that they, they did it in the darkness of their, of their kitchens, um, an icon in the, in the house could send you to Gulag for 10 years. Um, it was an officially atheistic state, um, actually modeled on the last years of uh, Robespierre's French Revolution terror, where they, they just massacred nuns and priests. And so, and so uh, Stalin revived it, and it lived as an official institution after the war. What was disclosed during the time of Glasnost is that the top of the church hierarchy some not only were informers uh, and cooperated with the KGB, but some of them had ranks in the KGB. Uh, and so with all of that growing up there, I can't imagine the, I mean, the, the, the support for this war is shameless. I mean, Funny, in the Soviet Union, the church was used for propaganda purposes of peace. I mean, it was peace on the Soviet terms, but, you know, they, they you know, the priests traveled to peace groups in the West and, and told them about how peaceful the Soviet Union was. This is the opposite. I mean, this is blessing the killing, incidentally, of the Russian Orthodox brethren in Ukraine. I mean, which, by the way, left to a, a rift. Um, they no longer recognize um, uh, uh, the, the um, authority of the uh, uh, Moscow Orthodox uh, hierarchy. They created their own church, um, but it's still, it's still the Orthodox church. And, and that, that the Russian priests led by uh, Kirill, uh, the, the patriarch of all Russia, would do such a thing is just mind-boggling.